A prophetic declaration for the month, just as it has just been declared. My star is rising. Oh, I love that. I don't know whether somebody's star is rising this month. But if you are with an excitement, you will say it loud now. Come on, let the devil hear you. Make it loudest now. Hallelujah. That will be a reality for you this month. In the name of Jesus. All through our Sunday services, we are going to be looking at our teaching series, which is titled, Unveiling Our Breaking Limit Heritage in the World. Unveiling Our Breaking Limit Heritage in the World. And we are looking at part 1A in this service. And specifically, we are looking at our limit-breaking heritage from the mirror of the world. From the mirror of the world. James chapter 1, verses 22 to 25. But be ye doers of the world, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the world, and not a doer, is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgeteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continuing therein, he not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. Praise the name of the Lord. From that scripture, therefore, the word of God is synonymous to the mirror of our destiny. The word of God is synonymous to the mirror of our destiny. Any other person can give you any picture of yourself. But your true picture, you can see when you stand before a full length mirror. And look, it shows exactly who you are. Praise the name of the Lord. Anybody can tell you so many things about yourself. But when you stand before the mirror, you see exactly the mirror sends back to you exactly who you are and what you are looking like. Praise the name of the Lord. So when situation begins to beat you, try to beat you down sometimes in life, that's why you should have a mirror in your house. And then stand before it and begin to declare to yourself who you are. Get yourself excited. Praise the name of the Lord. The same way God's word is synonymous to the mirror of our destiny. It shows us clearly the picture of who we are in God. He shows us God's picture concerning us. Nothing can be truer than the truth. The word of God is truth. So, the discovery, therefore, of our spiritual identity is what ushers us to a breaking limit world. The discovery, discovering your spiritual identity ushers you to a world of breaking limits. You want to break limits? This is the foundation. You must know who you are. You must know who God says you are. Because you are not what people say you are. You are not what situation, situation says you are. No, you are not what your culture says you are. You are not what your parents say you are, as it were. You are what God says you are. So if you don't understand who God says you are, you may not fulfill God's plan for your life. In John chapter 8 and verse 25, they ask Jesus, then said unto him, Who art thou? Who art thou? If, that, if you are asked that same question now, I wonder what your answer will be. Some will say, ah, They say I'm a failure. They say I can't marry. They say, 
They say nobody succeeds in our family. People have been so much used to what people say than what God says. They ask Jesus, who are thou? That's where our breaking limit experience begins from. Who are you? And Jesus said unto them, even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say. The same that I say unto you from the beginning. That's what, who I am. So your identity, understanding your identity is crucial to breaking limits. You are, why? Because your identity is your strength. It's your security and your authority. If you know who you are, Satan can't mess up with your destiny. If you know who you are, situations and circumstances cannot crumble you. Hallelujah. David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Because he understood who he was. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? I will pull you down, your head down today. Oh, the three Hebrew brothers looked at the king and said, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you this matter. Our God will deliver us, we will not bow to you. They were speaking on the platform of the understanding of their spiritual identity. Praise the name of the Lord. If you don't know who you are, every little situation of life will upset you. If you don't know who you are, oh, what should take you up will just submerge you. Praise the name of the Lord. God's servant, severally has shared with us, God's servant, Bishop David, has shared with us the story from one of Kenneth Hengen's book about the lion cub who lived and grew among sheep. You, rem you, understand? you remember that story? And every time he was with the sheep, he started looking at their way of life. And with no time, he started living like them. So be careful who you associate with. Because your friend will determine your end. Your friends determine your attitude. Your habitat determines your habit. So be careful. So he, he soon began to live their lifestyle. And then each time they go to the river to drink water and then they see a lion, all of them will run. He too will run with them. And that went on severally. And one day when he got to the river to take some water, he looked at himself. The water now reflecting who he is. And looked at himself and lo and behold, he saw the lion come again. Looked at himself as reflected from the water. And looked at the lion. He saw that there was similarity. Ah, this is, I look like these people. Ah, this is me, this is them, this is me, we're the same. I'm not, I don't belong here, what am I doing here? And then cross over to meet them. And they welcomed him gloriously. And then he started now behaving like a lion. And no more a sheep. Why? Because of an understanding of his true identity. If you don't understand who you are, I tell you something, you can't go more than what the natural man can do. You can't break no limits. So breaking limits begins with a picture from scriptures of who you are. And that can only be seen from the mirror of God's word. The word of God is mirror that reflects to you exactly who your identity, what your identity is. Therefore, who are you from scriptures? Number one. By redemption, you have eternal life. Which means you share divinity with God. By redemption, you have eternal life, indestructible life, a life that cannot be menaced by the devil. You share divinity 
with God. Even though in human form, but you share divinity with God. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus. Eternal life through Jesus. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Ever living. Cannot be cut short by accident. Cannot be cut short by any forces of hell. You share divinity with God. You share divinity with God. In other words, you are a God. In human form. Praise the name of the Lord. The things that affect men are not ordinary men. Are not expected to affect you. He said, for when men are cast down, I will be saying there is a lifting. Because why? You are not, you are not natural. He that cometh from above is above all. Above failure, above defeat, above frustration, above stagnation. Hallelujah. If that is you, can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. You share divinity with God. You share divinity with God. You share divinity with God. So when we talk about breaking limits, don't let it be a strange language to you. Because you share divinity with God. In John chapter 14 and verse 12, Jesus said, The works I do, you shall do. Why? Because you share divinity with me. Greater works than this shall you do. Because you are not, you know, natural. You share divinity. Because I go unto my father. So if he talks about greater work, don't look at yourself. Don't look at it as an impossible task. If you understand the nature you carry, then you know that it's cheap. Number two, who are you? You are born again a supernatural being. You are born again a supernatural being. John chapter 3 and verse 8. The wind blow it where it listed. Thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell where it cometh and whether it goeth. So is every man that is born of the spirit. You cannot calculate him. You may not hear noise, but you just begin to see news effects. The wind blow it where it listed. Which means no situation of life can cock you down. No one can, can, can define your destiny. No. No one can cock your destiny. No. You feel it. You just feel the wind is blowing. You don't know where it's coming from and where it's going. Praise the name of the Lord. So is anyone that is born of the Spirit. is making waves without noise. And you can't calculate him. You can't stop. Can you stop the wind? You just look at wind, wind, wind. Now don't come here, don't come here. Go there. You can't. Even when you try to seal a place to be airtight, it's still fine somewhere. Is that not so? <laughs> the wind blow it where at least. Which means no, no one can stop you. Praise the name of the Lord. No one. You are born again a supernatural being. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18. I and the children that God has given unto me were for signs and for wonders. Not for shame. Not for reproach. No. For signs and wonders. Everything concerning you will be signs and wonders. He's, he's, you know, he's expected to be signs and wonders. Your business, signs and wonders. Your family, miracle family. Your career, miracle career. You know, your health, supernatural. Praise the name of the Lord. Your finances, supernatural. That's who you are. You are born again a supernatural being. You are born again a supernatural being. No devil can molest your destiny. Jesus told them, have I not said unto you that you are gods? He said, Moses, I've made you a god over Pharaoh. I've made you a god over Pharaoh. The things that you run away from, if you understand who you are, they will be the one running away from you. I've made you a god over every situation of life. Because you are a supernatural being. You are a supernatural being. Hallelujah. Number three, you are born again a king 
to reign on the earth. We are looking at the mirror of God's world. This is what the world is showing concerning you. If you can see it. You are born again. A king, not a slave, a king to reign on the earth. A king to reign on the earth. You are born again, a king to reign on the earth. You are to reign, not to be a slave. You are a child to be envied, not to be pitied. So don't live that kind of life. There are people that just live their life, they are just seeking for pity. They just like people to pity them. They like sharing challenges. They like looking like a problem. They just need attention. No matter what you are going through now, you are not going to be the first. Neither will you be the last. Somebody has passed through that same challenge and emerged a champion. Every day you wake up, you, you are walking like somebody who, who has been defeated. Somebody who is angry with God. Somebody who, who is already finished. So you are breaking, it's my year of breaking limit. And they, break, they break them now. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Just because you want people to ask, hey, my sister, what thing they have on? Mm. It is well. Mm. What thing now? I hope everything is well. Mm. It is well. Mm. 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 And you, they look at you, you are not looking pregnant like a woman that wants to deliver. You are breathing. Praise the name of the Lord. And before you know, you started crying. No, that's not who you are. You are born again a king to be envied, to reign, to reign. Revelation chapter 5 and verses 9 to 10. Wordy, wordy is the lamb that was slain. Verse 10. He has made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. We shall reign on the earth. In Isaiah chapter 62 and verse 3. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the house of the Lord. Not an epitome of shame. And a royal diadem. In the hand of our God. A crown of glory. A crown of glory. A royal diadem. That's who you are. So in whatever field of endeavor you are in life. You are to reign. Not to be a slave. You are to reign. Not that people look at you and shake their head. Mm -mm. This one. How you won't be like this? Your life is supposed to be an exclamation mark. Not an explanation. They look at you and say, wow. Wow. They look at your business and say, hey. They look at your family and say, hey. Wow, this is good. That shall be your portion. You are to reign on the earth. You are to reign. You are to reign. You are to reign. Not to be a slave. You are to reign. You are to reign in whatever thing you are involved in life. You are for distinction. Not stop shaking hands with average people, mediocre. What are you doing on the ground? That's not where you belong. You are there to be at the top. To reign. Praise the name of the Lord. That's what the Bible says concerning you. You are not a failure. No, you are not a failure. Where you are now is not your bus stop. It's only a face. You are still going. Rejoice not over me, my enemy. Even though I fall, I shall rise. You have to reign on the earth. Not to be enslaved. That's what the word of God says. So don't interpret your situation as your portion. No. Smile at the sea. Praise the name of the Lord. Smile at the sea. Smile at that challenge. Weeping me and the for a while. I'm bouncing higher, higher. It's just for a while. This challenge is just for a while. Know who you are and know where you are going. That's what makes Joseph to still be smiling inside the prison. He knew that that's not where he belonged. He's just a passing through place. So he went about all the prisoners. Come on, rejoice. Why are you looking so sad? Come on, don't worry. You are living here. That's the one who himself is there. That should be thinking about his life. 
Somebody may be there and say, this one, he, they think about in life at all. Just they jump out, jump, jump out, they say, I'm breaking limit. When you are breaking down. Praise the name of the Lord. So don't let where you are now determine your mood. Praise the name of the Lord. Until you change your mood, God cannot move in your situation. Hallelujah. Number four. You are redeemed a giver, not a beggar. You are a giver, not a beggar. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor that you through his poverty might be rich. Even though he was rich, he became poor so that you and I might be rich. Praise the name of the Lord. And in John chapter 10 and verse 10, the thief cometh not to steal, but cometh not, but to steal, to kill and to destroy. But I've come to give you life and to give you more abundantly. More abundantly. More abundantly. You are redeemed a giver. You are redeemed a giver, not a beggar. You are redeemed a giver, not a beggar. Begging is reproachful. That's why the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. Some people could be prayer warriors, full of spiritual energy. But when it comes to these aspects, they can't see themselves in that light. Hallelujah. You are redeemed to have sufficiency in all things. We saw the life of Abraham. You know how he started, you know how he ended in Genesis chapter 24, verse 1. He was blessed in all things. He was not lacking anything. The Lord blessed him in all things. But that wasn't so in Genesis chapter 12. Nothing from 12. But he understood the covenant. Walked in obedience. Hallelujah. If you want to fulfill destiny in grand style, you must be a giver. You want to prosper. No prayer can handle that one. It is just for you to be involved in covenant activities. You must be a giver. There is no shortcut. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17. He said, charge them that are rich in this world. Don't be high-minded nor trusting on certain riches. Anything you have, you can't give. If you are not a giver, it won't last. Uncertain. Riches are uncertain. What makes it certain is when you engage it in the covenant. Uncertain riches. But in the living God, to trust in the living God, who give richly all things to enjoy, that they do good. Be rich in good works. Ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Praise the name of the Lord. When your hand is tight, your destiny will be tight. You want to, you know, give to nations tomorrow. You start with your neighbors. Start giving to those who can see now. I've given. Praise the name of the Lord. What determines true wealth is your good works. Your good works. Your good works. Your good works. Praise the name of the Lord. Your good works. Nobody cares what you have, but what you add. That's what is the matter. What are you adding? You adding value to people's life. It's not your disposition, but your distribution. Are you a distributor? Be a giver. Practice it. Practice it with the mind of getting to where God has programmed for you in life. We've had series of testimony from God's servant Bishop Edupo. He didn't arrive where he is today by accident. No, it's covenant. Covenant, if you see where he is now, as compared to where he was before, sharp, too wide, too wide, too wide. Praise the name of the Lord. Too wide. Some of us that were here, we are there in the church early enough. At least we saw some of those things. We may not have seen everything, but we saw some of those things. If he told you that he had that many suit, two suits that he was changing, changing one, at least that one is visible to those of us who were there then. Praise the name of the Lord. We saw it. We knew the vehicle he was talking about. So it's real. Walk in the covenant. Walk in the covenant. Be a giver. Be a distributor. Be a giver, not a beggar. You, you are not a beggar. 
If you believe that word, you will begin to give. You see, people don't give not because they don't have. It's a spirit of stinginess. Those who say they don't have, they can never have. No matter what level you are, you have something you can give. You have something you can give. Start from there. Start from there. And then you see God lifting you. Praise the name of the Lord. See yourself from the picture of God's wall. See who you are. That's how to begin to break limits. This year, the world will know that you are serving God. Everything concerning your life and destiny will speak breaking limits in the name of Jesus. How do you assess God's plan, therefore, from his word? Number one, you must be born again. John chapter 1 and verse 12. You must be born again. As many as receive him, he gave them power. Power to become the sons of God. John chapter 1 and verse 12. But as many as receive him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Praise the name of the Lord. Until you are born again, you don't have access. Access. You don't have access to God's plan for your life. Because the shepherd knows the voice of his sheep. If you are not born again, you are a stranger. John chapter 10, verses 4 to 5. You are a stranger. You can't hear his voice. No, you can't hear his voice. Number two, we must continue to be spiritual. We must continue to be spiritual. You want to walk in God's plan for your life, you must be spiritual. First Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. You must be spiritual. Carnality destroys people. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, but they are because they are spiritually designed. Until you are spiritual, you can't catch God's plan exactly for your life. You just be roaming and roaming and roaming and roaming. Praise the name of the Lord. Psalm 25 and verse 12. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in his ways that he shall choose. The fear of God. If you are spiritual, you will walk in God's fear. You will fear God. You will watch what you do. Spirituality is not carrying Bible. Praise the name of the Lord. It's not carrying Bible. It's not the size of Bible you come, you carry. No. It's not looking pious. Those days, those years, I remember you are going for outreach, you carry Bible and put it in your arm. And you look so pious. Give your life to Jesus. I say give your life to Jesus. If not, hell. No, it's not. That's not what spirituality is. Spirituality is applying scripture to your day-to-day -day life. The word of God being interpreted from your lifestyle. That's what spirituality is. Praise the name of the Lord. That's what spirituality is. You have just finished 21 days of prayer and fasting. In fact, you made your own 23. And then you are keeping malice with somebody in your unit. Praise the name of the Lord. Spirituality is applying God's word to your life. Let it be real. You may even be coming to church every day and sleeping in church. That's not spirituality. Spirituality is applying God's word to your life. People are tired of reading this Bible. They want to read you and me. To know God. That's spirituality. Applying the word of God to your day-to-day -day life. That's what spirituality is. Hallelujah. Walking in the fear of God. Walking in the fear of God. That is any step you take or you want to take or you are taking in life. Is God pleased with this thing I'm doing? Not fear of men, but is God pleased? Desperately living your life to please God. Praise the name of the Lord. That's what spirituality is. Paul says, when I was a child, I understood as a child. I acted as a child. But now, I'm of age. He can discern spiritual things. Praise the name of the Lord. May the Lord give you understanding. In the name of Jesus. 
Well, it's our day of all round rest. The world is full of struggles. But no matter the struggle around you, one thing is sure. God has promised us rest. Rest. God has promised you and I rest. Rest. No matter the turbulence. No matter the challenges of life. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered them from all. Many may be. But the Lord delivered them from all. Rest is promised for us as children of God. Hebrews chapter 4 and verses 9 and 10. There remained therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also had ceased from his own works as God did from his. And what must we do therefore to enter into that rest? Let us labor therefore to enter into the rest. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. How do we labor? Labor how? Labor in the world. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing and of soul and spirit, of joint and marrow, the son of thought and the intent of the heart. Hallelujah. Rest. Come unto me, all you that travel and heavy lady, and I will give you rest. Matthew chapter 11 and verses 28 and 29. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, and meek and lowly, and you will find rest unto your soul. Rest. Come, come, come. There are so many challenges in the world. Everybody's running helter skelter. God say, Come. This is where you find true rest. There is no rest anywhere. Here is where you find true. True rest is in God. Or else you just be going from pillar to post. Somebody calling you about, let's go. There's somebody there. There's somebody there. there. You have gone to every place. True rest is in God. When God gives you rest, is total. All around. Rest round about. Come. Come, if only you can stay with God. If only you can click to God. You live a life of rest. Hallelujah. Rest. What is it that qualifies you for all round rest? Just like we said, you must be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. So if you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself. But come to him. Come to him. He's a prince of peace. When you allow Jesus into your life, he gives you peace that no man can give. Peace that no man can give. In John chapter 14 and verse 27, he said, peace I leave unto you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the word give, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither be it afraid. My peace I give unto you. When you are in Christ, crisis will cease in your life. Not just coming to church. Everybody can come to church. But do you have Jesus into your life? Everything is getting scattered and scattered around you. Check yourself. Are you still in God? Maybe you gave your life to Jesus before. But along the line, you drifted. You drifted. Return back to him. Return back to him. Uh, or else, it's just a life of continuous restlessness. Hallelujah. But Jesus is the prince of peace. He gives peace. And the kind of peace he gives, no man can give it. The kind of peace that even though you don't have physical money inside your pocket, but you are rest assured that all is well. All is well. You are not perturbed. You are not troubled. And then, suddenly you see everything begins to open up. Praise the name of the Lord. Peace. 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 If a man loses his peace, no matter what money he has, is valueless. People who claim to have the money, they are running everywhere, no peace. You can have as much money as you have if you don't have peace. You can't enjoy it. It's a life of suffering. Some people you envy, they envy you, you don't know. They envy you. You come out from church. You are smiling. You know, you are saying, smile, you are breaking limits. They envy you. They have all the money. They have all the vehicle. They look at you. They way you are so excited every day. Say, ah, how I wish me to have become be smiling like this. And some people will go back now and be thinking, oh God, see this person. See cars, man. No be moto, na car. And the man is dying inside. If you have the peace of God, you have everything. God is giving you rest today in the name of Jesus. Be born again. Number two, settle down in the house of God with God. Settle with God. Settle in his house. 
Said to Zion is an appointed place. Second Samuel chapter 7 and verse 10. Said to Said to Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel. And I will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore. Zion is a place you run into and just find rest. Satu. Don't be one leg in, one leg out. Someday you come to a church and you speak the language in church like anybody. But Monday, you are with the herbalist. You are with herbalist. You go one, you go to one in Coco there, you branch to Mosuga there, you go to a coup there, and then go to it's a local. Praise the name of the Lord. And then you run around, run around, run around like that from, from Monday to Saturday. Sunday you return to church again. In fact, with one of the things they gave you in your pocket. is anointing service. Lord, in the name of Jesus, it will work. Make everything waiting for my pocket work. Lord, empower it. You are deceiving yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. Stay with God. Stay with God. Anything God cannot do, no man can do it. And is there anything God cannot do? Stay with God. Be committed. Don't come and try God. Stay with him. Stay with him. Stay with him. Stay with him. Settle down in church. Praise the name of the Lord. In Psalm 132, verses 13 to 16, you see all the blessing that you stand to gain in Zion. Hallelujah. You see all the blessing for the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired for his habitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will clothe her priest with salvation. Her saints shall shout aloud. Aloud with joy. Hallelujah. Provision is there. Blessing is there. Rest is there. Everything. Stay in church with God. Stay in church with God. Stay. God has transformed people's life. You are the next to share your testimony. I don't care what your lifestyle is. Stay with him. People may have told you that you are very, very bad. You know how bad many of us were before? Stay with God and by the word of God, you will see your own life change before your face. You will become an amazement to your world. If you believe it, shout a louder amen. And finally, number three, enter into the covenant to serve God and the interest of his kingdom as a priority in life. Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye forth the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. All these things shall be added. Hallelujah. See God. In 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verses 12 to 15. They entered into a covenant to serve God. And God gave them all round rest. Verse 15. He gave them all round rest. Hallelujah. He was found of them. And they gave them all around rest. Look for a unit to join. Go to Bible school. Praise the name of the Lord. Join a unit. Be a part of the home cell system. Just be lost in serving God. Running after him. To cover up for the wasted years. And see whether God will not show you as a masterpiece in the world. When those who seek after God end up with good. You seek God, you end up with good. May the Lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus. The unction that is upon this commission, every turbulent area, I command peace now in the name of Jesus. Every issue that looks like a mountain in your life is hereby broken now in the name of Jesus. I prophesy by the authenticity of God's word in your family, begin to enjoy rest in the name of Jesus. In your business, begin to enjoy rest in the name of Jesus. In your career, begin to enjoy rest in the name of Jesus. In your academics, begin to enjoy rest in the name of Jesus. In your health, no matter the evil report, I command rest in the name of Jesus. Whatever the devil is tearing at you right now, I command your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Every arrow of the enemy that has been troubling your destiny is hereby returned back to the sender in the name of Jesus. By the word of God, I command all rest for you. In the name of Jesus.
Jesus. No more shadow in your life anymore. The kind of rest that this commission enjoys. Enter into same in the name of Jesus. There shall be no evil report for anyone here this week in the name of Jesus. Everywhere you step to, the door will open for you in the name of Jesus. The God of Bishop Enipo will answer for you anywhere this week. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. It's my year of breaking limits. Then what eyes have not seen nor ears how shall be your experience all through the year 2020. Congratulations.